First question is from CD Champs 17. Saw an ad on TV for the Jenny Craig DNA meal plan for weight loss. It seems like a clever marketing BS. Any viability to this? It is clever marketing BS. So the science. <laughs> <laughs> next right. question. And yep. done. And we're done. Now next, uh, the the science on DNA and how nutrition affects DNA and what works best for you is still in its infancy. Not yeah. to mention, we're finding that they're jumping the gun fast on this. Though. They are, and it, because it sounds cool, it sounds yeah. individualized. Uh, there's so many. By the way, here's the thing you need to understand: there is a very, in, very, very strong individual variance with how you react to food. And, it, and it, it's a, there's a lot of factors. One of them is DNA. We still don't understand it fully, but it is one of them is DNA. You have your microbiome. That's another thing that affects how you respond to food. You have your own emotional reactions and connections to food. And nobody ever takes that into account. And, and that's the thing that you coach when you coach people. And some you? people claim blood type makes a difference too. Yeah, well, oh, right. I yeah, haven't this, seen any science to support that, but you're-, you're Yeah, they, that, that, that diet's still out there. No, sure. yeah, no, I, 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 read the, I read the book, like, I don't know, it was probably six, seven years ago when blood I read it. Blood type diet? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they try and support it with some science. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, why, and why this works for anybody- is if you take somebody that is on no diet and they start following a DNA protocol diet or a, a or a blood diet. type diet, yeah, yeah you, you'll see what they all do is they point you in the direction of whole foods. None of these recommend processed foods. None of these recommend high calories. So it's a restrict, restricted calorie diet. They eliminate foods. They, they normally drive towards whole foods. And then they attach it to your DNA or your blood type. Yeah. And then you go through it and you're like, holy shit, you know what? I do feel better. Mm -hmm. Inflammation is down. My gut does feel better. It's like, okay, well, is it because you're following the blood type or the DNA diet, or is it because you're actually following a diet? It is. That's why. And you have to, the thing that none of them take into account are the emotional connections and reactions to food, which is huge. It's massive. Let's say you eat a food and you know it's healthy, but you really hate eating it. I'm just using a stupid example, and you force yourself to eat it, right? Now that food is going to cause a potentially a stress response in the body. Was it the food that caused a stress response physiologically, or was it the emotional reaction to that food? Um, there's a lot of this, and these are the things. When I used to coach people or train people, the main thing that I would coach to was that. That was the main thing. It was very almost never would I do things like, you know, oh, what's your ethnicity, or what's your DNA, or, or how are we supposed to eat? Right. It was always like, how does it make you feel? You know, what do you crave? How do you feel afterwards? What are the, the things that you're noticing? Oh, and by the way, the stuff that you're finding that works for you really well now, don't marry it because context change changes, things change, and so might the way you react and respond to these different foods. But you're 100% right, this diet is a low-calorie diet. So will people lose weight on it? Mm. Of course, because it's low calories, but do there's you no know, magic in it. Do you know if they're using like Ancestry.com or one of those like other things to try and pair and, and attach like the lineage of you know their... DNA in their gene pool? No, but you know what I think is, uh, I don't know about that, um, but here's what I think in terms of technology might be interesting. I think these continual glucose monitors and technology that measures actual reactions and responses to your body to food in real time and only to you as an individual, that's where I could see some potential value. Yeah. So something that you wear, because they have these, these, these glucose monitors, but there's other technology that's emerging, right? Mm -hmm. Where you put on a patch or whatever and it attached to an app on your phone, you eat a food and you can see in real time Insulin, cortisol, inflammatory well, they speculate. Markers. I heard uh, rumors that that you know the Apple Watch was going to incorporate a lot of that, you know, in the next generations uh, to come. So it'll be interesting to see if they can like do that and attach that. That'll actually be something of value, a metric, you know, like that it would be helpful. Yeah. Now the thing that I don't like about all these metrics is that here's here's oh, what, what a I, cool website. I know, isn't that great? You, well, Jenny Craig's massive, dude. They yeah. have so much money. Uh, here's something that I see as as a drawback. Um, and I'll use an example of, uh, of like a keto diet, right? All these studies coming out and people saying, oh my God, ketogenic diet works real great for me. And, you know, studies come out, show it reduces inflammation. Great for cognition. Look at these blood level, you know, markers going down. Then people make the case. This is how you're supposed to eat. Carbs are harder to find in nature, whatever. It's so super, super compelling. You get very, very sold on this diet. This is it. This is the one. You try it. You lose weight. And you're like, wow, I'm losing weight. Then you start not feeling good, but you ignore it. You ignore your body, how it feels, because you've been so sold on the metrics, on all the 
information that you've heard about this diet and you start ignoring your body. I fear that can happen with stuff like this where you get this diet and you're like, well, this is supposed to be good for my DNA. I'm going to ignore these signals and signs that my body's telling me, the constipation, the lack of energy, my skin issues. It must, it has to be something else because this says that it's perfect for my DNA. These types of, uh, uh, this types of diets or the way they market them, I feel like can start to push people away from paying attention to their body. When, when our problem with nutrition is not lack necessarily lack of information. In fact, usually it's not lack of information, especially nowadays. Mm. It's usually a lack of connection to yourself. Yeah, that's yeah, a, that's the attention. argument that uh, Dr. Andy Galpin makes in his Unplugged book is that we just almost, you know, too much information that people are relying on these tools to provide this versus trying to learn and figure it out yourself. Totally.